If caught early, stomach cancer is nearly 100% curable. So it's crucial to pay attention to these signs and symptoms, as well as prevention methods, best tests and risk factors, what to avoid and what actions to take. Before refrigeration, when food was salt preserved, it was the deadliest cancer worldwide. It's vital to note all the tips and scientific info I'll share in this video. Remember, this isn't my opinion, but what science tells us. I'll start with signs and symptoms, then discuss how to reduce your risk of stomach cancer. The signs include, number one, always feeling full, known as a sense of fullness. You feel stuffed after eating little with no apparent cause. It's not a virus you caught, for example. You're not feeling sick from something. You're not taking antibiotics, for instance, which can sometimes make you feel full, like you don't want to eat, or you ate a little and can't fit more. That's the feeling of fullness. Number two, darker stools. Here's a big catch. Many people do this and end up delaying the disease's discovery. Dark, strong smelling stools, what could this mean? It could indicate intestinal bleeding. Melena is the medical term for feces containing digested blood. Many people then have this idea. If my stools are darker, it could be bleeding, so I'll do a fecal occult blood test to check for blood, which is a big mistake because tumor bleeding is often intermittent. What's that? It bleeds a bit, stops, then bleeds again. So it's not always continuous bleeding that shows up in tests. If you suspect blood in darker stools, an upper endoscopy is needed to check the stomach. If endoscopy is normal, other tests like colonoscopy can help with melena diagnosis. For stomach cancer detection and early diagnosis, upper endoscopy is the best test. There's no alternative blood test like tumor markers for this purpose. These tests don't replace upper GI endoscopy. Tests like CEEA, a tumor marker, are talked about but don't indicate cancer presence alone. This test isn't for diagnosis. Don't rely on occult blood tests or tumor markers to assume all's well. For suspected stomach cancer, an upper endoscopy is the go-to test, okay? This is crucial. Why? Because many don't show all these classic signs I'm mentioning. Early on, symptoms can be mild or even non-existent. As the disease progresses, signs and symptoms start to appear, becoming more obvious. So it's vital to get the best test right away and not be misled by false hope from other tests. Those tests are good, but for stomach cancer, upper endoscopy is key. The third sign is fatigue, loss of appetite, and shortness of breath. Why? Cancer can cause anemia, not just from bleeding, but also due to inflammatory issues. If you have anemia, you'll experience these signs and symptoms. These are symptoms related to decreased hemoglobin and hematocrit, which indicate anemia. Blood can't be oxygenated properly, leading to reduced physical capacity, paleness, and constant fatigue. So, anemia needs to be investigated too. Through a blood count, we can assess germ cell production and overall cell counts. In this case, a blood count can help us check for anemia. It's always important to investigate the cause of anemia, and bleeding can be a cause as well. Number four, burning sensation, heartburn, indigestion, feels like something's burning inside. Often this burning comes from common issues like gastroesophageal reflux disease. Some stomach acid flows back into the esophagus causing that burning sensation. But other conditions, including stomach cancer, can also cause this symptom. Sign number five is the strangest one, often overlooked by people. It occurs in later stages, swollen lymph nodes, those small lumps that grow during infections. This can also happen with stomach cancer, not just near the stomach, but in the armpit and collarbone areas too. So be aware of these swollen lymph nodes and get them checked out. Of course, it's normal after a recent flu as lymph nodes swell with infections. Have you noticed this? When you get tonsillitis, for instance, have you seen how the lymph nodes near your mouth and neck swell up? If these nodes are swollen without infection, it needs to be checked out. Sign number six is unexplained weight loss. Cancer can cause nausea, vomiting, and even daily bleeding. So it's a complex issue. And you might eat less too. Going back to sign one, you feel full and bloated easily. So be careful with that. What counts as weight loss? An unexplained drop in weight. We usually consider it 10% of body weight lost in six months without explanation. If you're losing weight without changing diet or exercise, get it checked. 
if it's not stomach cancer or some other type of cancer, for example, sign number seven is pain in the stomach pit and bloating. This can also occur due to stomach cancer. There's something I often see in practice when talking to patients. When stomach pain starts, getting a diagnosis is crucial. Often people start taking PPIs like omeprazole, esomeprazole, or pantoprazole. These drugs don't cause cancer by themselves. There's been a big debate in medicine about whether these drugs might increase stomach cancer risk. We now know they don't. But why was there such a debate? Many people still think these medications can cause cancer. Why is that? When people get heartburn, burning pain, or bloating, they often start taking these meds right away. They think, I don't want this pain, so I'll take something for it. They'll take omeprazole or pantoprazole. This can often delay getting a proper diagnosis. Let's say you have an early stage lesion. This lesion starts causing pain, bloating, and heartburn. If you take medicine that partly eases symptoms, you'll delay getting the proper test, which is an upper GI endoscopy. I see this often in practice. So here's the first tip. Actually, it's the second tip. The first tip is about tests, but the second is don't take meds for symptoms without knowing the cause. First, consult a doctor and ask them. Ask directly, why do I have these symptoms? What's going on with me? Often you get medication without knowing what it's for. You don't know how long to take it, and it might mask a more serious condition. So it's crucial to know and talk directly with your doctor. Ask. They won't refuse to answer. Getting a diagnosis is vital because the earlier you find the disease, the better your chances of recovery. In fact, much higher when it comes to stomach cancer. Now, how can we prevent it? What can we do to avoid it? What are the risk factors? There are risk factors we call non-modifiable. Those are factors we can't really change. Modifiable factors are ones you can act on. I won't focus on non-modifiable ones, but what are they? For example, men are at higher risk. People with blood types A or AB type O blood may offer protection compared to those two. Type A may increase risk by 19%, AB by 9%. But let's not dwell on that too much. Also, genetics and family history. Any close relatives who've had stomach cancer, you might have a gene linked to it too, so you should get tested earlier. Generally, screening is recommended 10 years before the age of first-degree relative had cancer. For example, if your father had cancer at 49, stomach cancer. Then at 39, you'd already need an upper endoscopy. This is crucial. I said we can't change some things, but early prevention and exams can help tremendously. So it's important to know your family history. Another factor we can't change, though we'd like to, is age. Stomach cancer is typically more common in those over 65. How can you protect yourself? I've broken it down into eight topics for easier discussion, including signs and symptoms. The first avoidable risk factor for stomach cancer is smoking and excessive alcohol consumption. When I say no smoking, I mean zero. Smoking greatly increases stomach cancer risk, not just lung cancer, but others too, including stomach cancer, okay? Number two, avoid very salty and processed foods. Excess sodium, salt, and processed foods also increase stomach cancer risk. Interestingly, we know average salt and sodium intake is double what WHO recommends, not just in the US or Europe, but in other countries too, like Brazil and Argentina, they also far exceed the recommended salt and sodium intake, which is up to five grams of salt or two grams of sodium. So it's more than double, right? In the US, for example, we consume more than 11 grams of salt. It's crucial to avoid this, not just for high blood pressure, but other health issues too. So packaged and processed foods, avoid them, okay? Instant noodles. Number three, foods with preservatives, especially nitrates and nitrites. Not just those with salt and sodium, but also bologna, parma ham, salami, copper, turkey breast and ham. These foods contain nitrates and nitrites, preservatives linked to increased stomach cancer risk. You might wonder how much do I need to eat to be in this risk group? Is it like salty foods where eating once won't put you at risk? Studies show eating processed meats three plus times a week increases stomach cancer risk. That's just three plus times weekly. Think about having ham sandwiches or salami at meetings or when visiting family. People often enjoy some salami then. This alone could increase your stomach cancer risk. Many think, I don't eat processed meats that often, so I'm fine. 
but that's not quite accurate. If you consider all meals and snacks, it's easy to exceed the limit if you're not careful. So I suggest removing processed meats from your diet, not just for sodium, but also preservatives. Number four, obesity and a sedentary lifestyle. We know fat tissue is metabolically active, producing substances that can alter metabolism and increase stomach cancer risk. Number five, those with prior stomach surgery, like bariatric surgery, have higher risk and need extra care. Number six is a hot topic, a bacterium called H. pylori. Have you heard of H. pylori before? Estimates suggest 50% of the world's population carries this H. pylori bacterium, which you can get from drinking unsafe water from a source that's not safe for consumption. And it's actually quite common. We know it raises your risk of stomach inflammation, symptoms like ulcers and those burning sensations. One of the changes this bacterium can cause is an increased risk of stomach cancer. So if you have symptoms or are being tested, antibiotics can treat this bacteria, okay? It's actually a reversible risk factor. Number seven, polyps. Polyps are often only discovered during an upper endoscopy but they're also a risk factor for stomach cancer. The eighth risk factor is a diet low in fruits and vegetables. A low fiber diet affects not just the intestines, but also the stomach. Fiber is beneficial. A study found that vitamin C rich fruits may help prevent stomach cancer. Interesting, right? You can make changes starting today. On a scale of zero to 10, how would you rate this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more videos like this one. Let me know which city you're watching from. I'd love to see how far this video has reached. Comment below and I'll send you a virtual hug. Next, I suggest watching my video about vitamin B. Can you recognize the signs of vitamin B12 deficiency? Now that you know about cancer symptoms, learning about B12 is crucial too. Click the link below to watch that video next. Take care and see you in the next video.